Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. About two weeks ago, a friend of mine uh, texts me and says, the CAPE is really high. CAPE stands for C-A-P-E, Convective Available Potential Energy. So it was really high, apparently, over Tornado Alley, over a vast region of the U.S. So said, okay, let's go. So he went and rented a car and packed, and I, I dashed home, picked up some U.S. cash, uh, and away we went. You know, packed a few things, and off we went from Ottawa down to Tornado Alley. We drove through the night, um, managed to catch some storms the next day, and we were basically chasing after storms, trying to find that elusive spinning tornado, the massive F5, but just like in Twister, you know, I wanted to go and chuck the beer bottle into the tornado, but, uh, you know, so uh, anyway, metaphorically, of course. So I guess it's important, you know, I try to give these presentations to give you some of the, you know, a better understanding of abrupt climate change, how quickly our planet is changing. But, you know, you know yourself uh, from looking, you know, living in the environment, you know, things are changing. Maybe, maybe you drive the car out in the country and you hardly get any bugs on the bumper and the windshield and anything, you know, anything. Where, whereas a few years ago or even a decade ago, your car would be plastered with, with bugs from an, a night trip. Um, you know, maybe the trees aren't doing so well in the forests nearby. Maybe there's a lot more disease and pestilence. Maybe, maybe uh, poison ivy is growing like to 10 feet high in your area, um, or certain plants are doing incredibly, you know, they're just growing like weeds um, and they're not weeds. Um, you know, maybe the, the mix of vegetation is different. You're a gardener, some things are better, some things are worse. Try to, you know, here, here's a little project for you. You know, just document it some way. You know, write up about it. Write an article to your local paper. Say you're concerned about climate change. Everything's changing. You know, where does it go? If things keep changing, where do we end up? Um, so I'm going to talk, why are things changing so much? Well, the chemistry of the atmosphere has changed. So the greenhouse gases that trap heat have changed. So you hear mostly about CO2 and it rises up in this zigzaggy pattern because uh, you know that's basically the earth breathing. Most of the uh, continents are in the Northern hemisphere. Um, so most of the vegetation on land is in the Northern hemisphere. And there's a lot of decid deciduous trees that lose their leaves and these trees go dormant in winter. So they're not sucking up CO2. So the winter, the CO2 levels go higher in the atmosphere. And then um, in the spring, the buds come out, everything starts growing again, it sucks up out a bit of CO2. And we get this cycle here. So obviously, if we increase the greenery on the planet, you know, we can get these, uh, we can get a, a, a lowering of this rate. This is not a straight line. This is going up in almost an exponential fashion. In fact, if you just take the change on a year to year basis, okay, this is the CO2 growth rate, if you like. So how much the rise was in PPMs per year, you can see there's variation and fluctuation here. Um, you can see the big spike here from 1998, which is a powerful El Nino. The oceans were warmer, absorbing less CO2, so the rise in the atmosphere was higher. And then you can see, you know, fluctuation from year to year, but you can see a general trend is going up. And I'll, show, I'll talk about 2015 and 2016 in a minute. Okay, this is methane. You can see this breathing, the seasonal pattern year to year. It kind of flattened out, and we're not exactly too sure why it flattened out, but it's had a strong rise again in 2007. Um, you know, warmer planet, uh, more rainfall, more wetlands, uh, a lot of methane produced there. There's a lot more coming from the Arctic than there was before from permafrost and clathrate. Fracking took off. You know, there's lots of reasons for the rise here, but this rise is accelerating. So this shows the, the change, the yearly growth rate of the methane. You know, the, so the slope of the curve, if you like, is decreasing, decreasing, almost zero here. 
and then it's increasing. If you're mathematically inclined, this is all you, you, you basically calculated the derivative. So don't be concerned about that word. You know, you know how to calculate the derivative. It's just measure the slope at different places and plot it and there's what you have. So we see the increase of the rate in 2007. Nitrous oxide, same sort of thing. You know, a lot of it is from agriculture. It comes from different soils and stuff. Uh, you know, we add nitrates to fertilizer and stuff. There's also industrial processes generating and it's also got an upward trend. Each of these things you know, if we want to measure the effect of on a per molecule basis, methane is much more powerful than CO2. In fact, it's about a couple hundred times more powerful on a molecule to molecule basis over a few years. Um, it's 86 times more powerful if you average over 20 years and it's 34 times if you average longer. Nit 100 years, nitrous, nitrous oxide is about 300 odd times more powerful on a molecule to molecule basis for the warming. So we've seen, an, we've seen in 2015 and 2016 unprecedented in Earth history rises. In 2015, 3.03 ppm. Here we had 3 ppm. If you take the average rate over the past 10 years, it's 2.01. You can see how these numbers are, are, are high here. This is the average here. Okay, uh, two, 2 ppm. Okay, so it's going up and up and up. And this is a very big concern, of course. You know, uh, why is it a big concern? It's a big concern because this is, a, this is data um, from the International Energy Agency and a group of other bodies. It's showing global CO2 emissions from humans, anthropogenic emissions. The growth rate, 1.1% a year in the 90s, up to 3.4% up to in the 2000s. And look what we've done here, 2015, 2014, 2013. It's flattening off here. 2016 was about the equal to the projection. Okay, so why is it going up so much in the atmosphere if, we're, if our emissions are flattening out? It's because it's, it's be, it seems to indicate that the global carbon sinks are failing. We talk about sources and sinks. Okay, sources, think of uh, the bathtub, the source is the tap, you're putting water into the bathtub, the level of the water in the bathtub is the concentration in the atmosphere of these gases and the sink, the drain, is where this stuff goes to leave the atmosphere. Some of it goes into the oceans, right? If the oceans are warmer, less can go into the oceans. If there's less plant material on the planet, then there's less CO2 being absorbed. So that's a sink, you know, as we get forest fires, you know, large boreal forest fires and tundra fires in the far north, then less carbon is being stored, more is going up into the atmosphere. So this is very bad news. This is why, you know, we can't, in, we don't have the luxury of reducing human emissions slowly. We have to treat this as an emergency basis and, and slash fossil fuel emissions because the risk is that the sinks fail enough that we basically zero our emissions and emissions in the atmosphere will still skyrocket up. Okay, we don't want to reach that point. That would be very bad news for your grandkids and your kids. But you know, it's going to be very bad news for you. I mean, this is, this is, you know, you, 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 you well, and, and you don't have to worry about, about saving all this money for your retirement. If, you know, so maybe that's good news. You'll spend everything you earn now and don't worry about the future because you know, you really, things are being trashed so quickly. So it's all, you know, it's, it's generally, most people would see this as very bad news. So what about the temperatures? What have the global temperatures done? So we can talk about the mean surface temperature, January to June, and this is 2016. And you can see what was happening in 2016, this big spike here. Um, and the zero is the average between so 1880 and 1910, if you take the average, that's the baseline in this plot. 
So we're reaching, so the key thing is that we always refer this to the Paris numbers, two degrees Celsius for safe, uh, a safe amount of temperature rise, or one and a half degrees aspiration from Paris. Those temperatures are relative to 1750 pre-industrial. It's very important that you are cognizant of the baseline of what we're talking about. So in order to add, in this case, this average here is higher than the 1750 baseline by 0.15 degrees Celsius. That's conservatively. I've seen that number as high as 0.3 degrees Celsius. I have to look and research this in more detail. So let's just take 0.15. And then you can get the temperature relative to 1750. Then you can compare a graph like this to those Paris targets. So let's uh, look in more detail here. So this is 2013, 14, 15, and 16. And in 2016, this is a distribution of the temperature on the Earth. Look at all these brown areas up in the Arctic, 3 to 4.9 degrees. This is Celsius. You'll have to convert it to Fahrenheit. Um, but 0 0.99, this is the global average rise of, and this is relative to 1951 to 1980. So this is NASA data. So we were almost a degree warmer overall in the planet in 2016 relative to 1951 to 1980 average. Okay, we have to convert this average, 1951 to 1980, and compare that to the 1880 to 1910 average. The difference is 0 0.3 degrees Celsius. The 1880 to 1910 average relative to 1750, as I said in the last slide, is 0 0.15 degrees Celsius. So the conclusion, 2016 is higher than the pre-industrial by 0 0.99 plus 0.3 plus 0.15, giving you 1.44 degrees Celsius. That's the number that you compare to the 1.5 degree aspiration and the two degree upper limit. So we're getting there. We're very, very close to there. Don't be confused by this number. The baseline is key. Okay, so here's February 2016, one month, 1.35 degrees above this average. So you need to add 0.3, you need to add 0.15, and you get 1.8 degrees, 1.35 plus 0.3 plus 0.15, 1.8 degrees. So February 2016 was higher than the pre-industrial by 1.8, already blowing away the aspiration of 1.5 and very rapidly getting to two degrees. Look, we have a climate change emergency by this metric alone, okay? So, so, I'm going to start talking, I'll leave the ice, I'll get to the ice next. This is such an important idea, okay, that you can't go switching the baselines. You see, I see report after report talking about temperature rise of, you know, a degree Celsius, okay, for 2016. It, sorry, it's 1.44 degrees Celsius right? Because we need to compare, we're talking about a temperature change. The temperature change depends on the end point and the beginning point. Where do you start? Where do you end? You can't go changing that 1750 number all of a sudden, okay? That's uh, the number in Paris. So, so things are a lot worse than a lot of articles are pointing out, whether it's through negligence on, on the part of the author whether it's through, and these things get propagated. You know, you see an article and it goes across Reuters and it goes around the world and it's got the wrong bloody numbers, right? So this is a very, very key point, which I cannot emphasize enough. The Paris temperature numbers, and I won't even talk about how they were derived at, are relative to pre-industrial 1750. So if you compare any other baselines to them, you have to add in those correction factors. So that's the key point of this video, the take home of, uh, that I hope you understand. Thank you.